What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 242 and we start today's episode off with a game against Crystal Palace here as we travel to Selhurst Park in the Premier League and right now we're on a six game winning streak in all competitions and I can't remember the last time we actually lost a game and we've been performing really really well of late obviously but one of the negatives of course is that Mbai Niang is still injured so coming into this game it would be Lazari and Welbeck up top together and in the last game we were bailed out got ourselves a stoppage time winner against Newcastle thanks to Danny Welbeck with that uh, 90th minute goal uh, to win the game 2-1 I think it was so coming to this game against uh, Crystal Palace although Palace uh, bottom of the table and although we've been playing really well of late I was still a little bit fearful and so I wasn't surprised to see the first chance go to Crystal Palace Dwight Gale's shot was well saved by Carboni however from the resulting corner Palace would get themselves the opening goal of the game through Alassani getting on the end of the, uh, the corner and putting it past our attack Italian goalkeeper and into the bottom corner so Palace had the brightest start in this game and they did take the lead of course not too long ago we took on Crystal Palace in the Capital One Cup and we demolished them by I think it was five or possibly even six goals to one uh, so you know coming to this game with our, you know one of our strongest teams out there of course no Niang of course but still a really strong team out there I was expecting us to do, you know to do really well even though I was a little bit fearful but to go down early on to look really shaky early on wasn't the start I was anticipating uh, regardless on the stroke of half time we had a free kick just outside the area. Of course, no Niang, who's our regular free kick uh, taker, so Mesut Ozil was standing over it. I decided to let the German have a go with his left foot, 23 yards out, and he does find the back of the net as well. Wayne Hennessy can't keep it out, and Mesut Ozil makes it Crystal Palace 1, Arsenal 1. So Ozil equalises right on the stroke of half time. Really good free kick by the German. He's had a really good start to the season as well, you know. I've uh, mentioned Savanier, how well he's done. He and Azil together in that midfield diamond have been really, really effective. Azil is such a great playmaker. He's really creative, but he's also popped up with a couple of goals already this season. There's another one for him there, and Mesut Azil gets his fourth goal in the Barclays Premier League as he makes it Palace 1, Arsenal 1 going into the break. And three minutes after the restart here, we had another good chance as Lazzarini finds Jordan Proctor. He picks out Mesut Azil, he turns his man, then turns another defender, then another defender and shoots, but Azil can't find a back of the net and it goes behind for a goal kick so still 1-1 in this game and from this corner Azil crosses the ball in Murray Williams wins the header but it goes over the bar that was in the 54th minute so still another chance for us there but it was still 1-1 and in the 66th minute a great chance for Palace they have themselves a corner where Casso ends up crossing the ball into the centre looking for his man but it goes straight to Carboni Carboni launches the ball forward towards Danny Welbeck who takes a really good first touch then beats his man down the left hand side has the pace to keep on going cuts inside the uh, defender that closes him down has a great chance to score but instead picks out the run of Raheem Sterling and Sterling who literally came off the bench seconds before that corner was taken makes it Crystal Palace 1 Arsenal 2 and gets his first goal for the club so I've mentioned it a few times now Sterling was yet to score before that goal there but he has got a couple of assists for us this season looked pretty good as a team player coming off the bench yet to score his first goal though was wondering when it was going to come and it comes here it's a really nice feed by Danny Welbeck plays it into the path of Sterling and Sterling just could not miss. You know, he's missed a couple of big chances already this season, I'm not going to lie, in his debut year for Arsenal to get his first goal, but had he missed that chance, I would have subbed him back off again, you know. That was one of his first touches, that shot. But uh, still, Palace won Arsenal 2, Sterling's first goal for the club, and I'm really pleased we turned the game on its head. So 2-1 to Arsenal. In the 31st minute, Crystal Palace had a great chance to equalise here to get themselves inside of Alessani, the goal scorer finding Viola, but Carboni makes a really good save when we get it away. So good stop by our goalkeeper there, but from that we went on the break, Vargas on the ball off the bench, gets onto it and finds Danny Welbeck. Well, we plays it back towards the Chilean. He's going through one-on-one, -on -one, but he's taken down by the number 31 for Crystal Palace, and the referee has no hesitation in awarding us a penalty and also booking the Crystal Palace defender. So, penalty to Arsenal. Sterling came off the bench and got us the second goal. Vargas comes off the bench and wins us a penalty that could result in the third goal, and it was going to be Danny Welbeck who was standing up to take it. A great chance for him to make it Crystal Palace 1, Arsenal 3 here. It's going to be Welbeck against the goalkeeper. Great chance to score his first goal in the game and get his second goal in two games here. Welbeck against Wayne Hennessy. Is Welbeck going to get the better of the Welsh goalkeeper? Yes, he is, because Hennessy dives the wrong way, and Danny Welbeck makes it Crystal Palace 1, Arsenal 3, and we are surely now going to extend the winning streak to 7. So, Welbeck getting a goal, and, you know, as I've mentioned before, since Niang's been injured, we need strikers to, uh, to you know, to fill the gap of Niang, because he's been scoring so many goals for us ever since he signed for us, really. And Danny Welbeck, you know, it's now two goals in two games, and as I mentioned, whenever Welbeck plays 
plays, he always does well. Whenever any striker plays for us, they seem to do well. You know, seriously, like every single striker in this Arsenal team, be it, you know, right from the bottom of the, uh, the list in, in Daniel Atta, all the way to the top in Mbain Yang, every single striker always does really well for us. So Crystal Palace 1, Arsenal 3. We're surely on course to get the win now. Uh, Alessani went relatively close there, directly from kickoff as Palace got themselves forward and uh, crossed that ball to the far post, but his header was off target. And it was how the game would finish as well. So Crystal Palace 1, Arsenal 3 here at Selhurst Park, and we grab ourselves the victory. And I think it was deserved as well. Palace did have a couple of good chances, but for the most part, I felt we were the better side, and I felt as though we deserved to get the three points, and I'm pretty pleased we did. And also, very pleased to see Sterling get his first goal for the club, which was long overdue. But uh, still, following that, we saw that Mbain Yang uh, came to me and said he was ready to play in the next game. The medical team assessed him, and he was ready to play. So I'm absolutely delighted about that, and he was going to return in this game. He didn't have the plaster next to his name or anything, so he made a full recovery. He was ready to play in this game against QPR. And, you know, despite the fact Welbeck's been doing okay in Niang's absence, you know, you just, you can't leave Niang out of the team, basically. So Welbeck back on the bench. The uh, reliable strike partnership of Mbai Niang and, and uh, Rodrigo Lazari would return. And taking on QPR, coming into this game against Chris Ramsey's side, I was obviously feeling really confident. Seven wins in a row. And uh, this season in the league, we're yet to lose a home league game. So I was definitely fancying our chances of making eight wins out of uh, the last eight. And the first chance would actually fall to QPR, though. That shot was well saved by Carboni, and we managed to get the ball away. And as you can see, in the 18th minute, we had our first chance of the game. As Zill's corner found Mari Williams, but his free header was off target. So still 0-0, but both sides having an early chance each. In the 21st minute, though, a great chance for us as Aikicek gets on the ball and plays a brilliant chip free ball towards Mbain Yang. He takes it around his man, ends up stopping the ball, getting inside and shooting, and also scoring as well to make it Arsenal 1, QPR 0. And it takes just 21 minutes, and I think it was 44 seconds, for Mbain Yang to get his first goal since returning from injury and we are 1-0 up here at the Emirates Stadium but it was a brilliant ball by Aikicek I'll say that much I mentioned uh, Azil and Savanier this year in the midfield diamond how well they've done Aikicek one of our new signings he came in on a pre-contract he hasn't really done much at all he's actually really underwhelmed me it's kind of my fault because I'm playing him in a central midfield position when he's listed as an attacking midfielder but he's still been pretty subpar in the games he's played but that was a really brilliant free ball towards him by Niang great couple of touches and a brilliant finish as well. So Arsenal 1, QPR 0, that man with the goal and Bayern Yang. In the 36th minute though, a great chance to make it 2-0. Rodrigo Lazari goes down the right-hand side, takes it round his man with a quick little ball roll and ends up smashing the ball past Bauman to make it 2-0. So Lazari makes it 2-0. He's got his strike partner back in and Bayern Yang and that's when he's best to it. You know, th those two as a partnership, they, they can do it on their own with other players, but they're best together and Rodrigo Lazari makes it Arsenal 2, QPR 0. Must be very pleased to know that man's back in the team. So Lazari makes it 2-0 to us. The little Italian went forward there. Nice little ball roll to beat uh, Belanta, I think it was, and a really nice finish by the little Italian. So Arsenal 2, QPR 0, Lazari's 8th goal of the Premier League this season. And in the 42nd minute here, QPR uh, crossed the ball in, but we get it uh, cleared away with Mesut Ozil finding Rodrigo Lazari. Once again, we're on the break with Lazari sprinting forward. He's got his teammate and by Niang running forward. He tries to pick him out of a free ball, succeeds in doing so. Niang goes through 1-1 one -on -one and smashes the ball into the back of the net for the third goal of the game, and by Niang second of the game as well. So Arsenal Arsenal 3, QPR 0, uh, one minute before the break. And, you know, to be honest, you know, Chris Ramsey's side did have one early chance, but for the most part, it was a game we were in control of, literally, you know, straight after that chance, basically. We really did look a really strong side. We were 3 0 up going into the second half, and we had a great chance here to make it 4 0, and we did succeed in doing so. And guess who got the goal? And by Niang, of course, a hat trick on his return from injury. The guy, there's just, you know, there's no slowing him down. You know, when some players come back from injury, they take their time to get themselves back into the game and get back to the form they were showing but not on Bayern Yang he comes back with a hat trick inside 60 minutes absolutely extraordinary wonderful first touch by Bayern Yang sets himself hits it on the half volley with his weaker left foot and finds the back of the net as well so Arsenal 4 QPR 0 a hat trick from Bayern Yang one goal for Lazari as well and I'm just I'm not even I don't, I'm not even surprised that Niang came back with a hat trick you know that's just how good he is but uh, still the final chance of the game would fall in the 90th minute as uh, Luke Garbutt's on the ball for us down the left hand side. He rides the challenge of his man, then finds Aaron Ramsey, who passed the ball to Callum Chambers down the right-hand side. Chambers eventually gets past Robinson, then plays it back inside towards the path of Ramsey, who takes a touch and shoots, but sadly for us, the Welsh midfielder's shot does hit the post and go behind for a goal kick. But it was how the game would finish, though. Arsenal 4, QPR 0, a very solid victory, a fantastic victory, really, and a fully deserved one as well. And, you know, eight wins in all competitions in a row now, and Bayern Yang's back too. It's going to take a really good team to beat us, uh, based on this current run of form. That is going to
enjoying the episode, guys. So, as always, a big thank you for watching the video. I really do hope you have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed today's episode of Career Mode, then please do leave a like, and I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.